All right, time for Battle of the Boomers, folks. We've got Kalp versus ACCM. For those who aren't familiar, ACCM, who's playing the Upset Dynasty in this matchup, is uh, a very old school player. AoE 2, I think he started in like 2005. Uh, Vietnamese Angel of Empires 2 player. He's been at it for a long time. I think he creates a lot of content as well. Meanwhile, and he's in the red, by the way. I should point that out. Meanwhile, players England in the blue. We have got Kalp. Kalp. For those that follow StarCraft, uh, might be familiar. He's not Marine Lord levels are big, but he has been playing in StarCraft 2 for a couple of years. Uh, won a few thousand dollars, more than I can say, so impressive nonetheless. But I'm sure it's going to be an impressive game because both of these players, I believe, are in the top 100 right now. In fact, ACCM is currently ranked at ooh, 56. Meanwhile, Kalp, and there's a reason we, we've got to we've got to cheer for Kalp, guys, because right now he is ranked 69. Nice. That's what we're looking for. All right, let's see if the, the English can win with their 69 or if Abbasid Dynasty is going to boom too much. Now, remember, we've seen it back and forth with this map because we are back on my favorite for 1v1. Land, 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 and a bunch of C. I love this map layout for 1v1s. It's so fun. But we have seen Abbasid Dynasty regularly. What we see the players do is almost always the case, actually, is they go for, like, a trip TC boom as fast as possible. England on this type of map could get frisky on the dock side and look to invade early. Uh, but their their economy, I don't think their economy should be as strong as Abbasid Dynasty. So in my opinion, Kalp needs to find a way to harass early to try and offset what will likely be greed coming out of ACCM. Because I think exclusively I've seen every time I've been watching Abbasid Dynasty on this map especially. Like there's no military building early on. It's just all in on the te uh, it's all in on the eco. It's all in on just being greedy and turtling. That being said, they do occasionally build into the Dow ships, of course. But the difference here is remember England. They have a stronger ship. They have the galleys compared to the Dow's. So if you produce them an equal rate, which I believe the yeah, the production time is exactly the same, it's just the cost is different. Then what you could do as Kalp is you could completely force ACCM off the war. Which remember is what we saw previously uh, happen against Dow when Blaze done it as Russ. Russ, of course, being a bit stronger for that timing of feudal, as they can convert all their fishing ships into an outright aggro if need be. Let's we'll see how this opening goes, though. We'll see if Kalp actually opts to maybe go for a quick double dock timing. How many people in wood right now? So he's got six. I think ACCM is equal. Okay, he's up to seven, so he's a little bit ahead. And he's already getting into the gold, and we'll see that move as well. Kalp, this gold is more important, by the way. It's not, you know, not just because obviously you want to tech up quickly to access the longbowman if you want to go that route, which I don't think he's likely to, just because it's a lot of land. More importantly, your galleys cost more. Galleys cost an extra 90 gold. You can see that's 180 wood, 180 gold compared to 180 wood and 90 gold of the Dow ships because you have a little bit extra range and uh, you do more damage and have more health of these galleys. But that you have to basically be ahead in numbers. I think if archer ships and galleys are equal numbers, you maybe finish the fight with one galley left alive compared to the archer ships. The Dow's just dead. So yeah, preferably you want to be two, three ships ahead. If you can achieve that number, then you will slam them on the water. But the problem is you do have to have more people in gold to achieve that number. And right now, actually, if anything, Kalp is behind. He's noticeably behind, actually. So fishing ship-wise, up to five, I'm pretty sure there's no difference in... No, they're the same production time. But it looks like his wood wasn't as well sorted. So he's only got three fishing ships out so far. I think the difference was how many people did he put on food? Yeah, yeah, that's it. I, I thought so. He's got a lot of people on food. If you look across here, ACCM has just completely abandoned food. He, does, like, he basically harvested sheep until he was able to produce about three fishing ships, and then you have enough to maintain village output. Meanwhile, Kalp, he actually invested a lot of people in, in slaughtering these sheep, because I believe England still does sheep a bit quicker, and more importantly, he wants that tech time and even quicker to maybe do some harassment on land. This means that you're sacrificing your presence on the water a little, or at least you're putting yourself behind. Now up to five fishing ships for reference, up to seven. So this will actually make a difference. This actually, I think this will slow Kalp's timing. In fact, we see it already. ACCM already starting to research. And remember, this is where Abbasid Dynasty gets strong is because he is investing the resources to build up into the Tech 2, but he's not investing his produce generators, his, his actual resource generators, the villages, into teching up. Whereas Kalp has had to invest two workers. Uh, he could have double speed if he went for an extra two, so if you're up to four workers. But the difference is that this is two workers that are not generating resources in your economy compared to the Abbasid Dynasty player who has all of his people generating resources and also will boom further still once he gets the Golden Ages going and links enough structures in, which 
by the time he techs up, he'll probably have linked 10 structures, and that's a 10% gather rate increase, which is just nuts. It's still only one dock. Meanwhile, three docks for ACCM. I don't know if he knows he's ahead, or by how much he knows he's ahead. Because the, the worrying part here is like, if Kalp is even, I think ACCM is ahead in this because we talked about the additional gold cost of your ships. ACCM now with the trip dock drop will be able to outproduce you on the water. And if you get forced off the water as England in this type of matchup, you're going to have to play for a much later timing because these choke points are too easy to hold against the Lombo spam. And I think in that situation, we will see ACCM quickly switch over to a trip TC boom and then the game gets really scary for Kalp. Council Hall is taking a lifetime. <laughs> that is the other thing to highlight, by the way. While you do have to commit workers compared, like you don't have to commit workers for these these wings, um, the research time is fixed. Remember that. Whereas for the like player building landmarks, you can invest more workers. But like I said, especially in this early game, I think Abyssid Dynasty almost always has the advantage on tech up because people tend to invest one, two, maybe three workers, sometimes the fourth, which, you know, Yes, you might get there a little bit quicker with four, but you are sacrificing a decent amount of resource generation in the early phase of the game when you only have you know, a finite number of workers, a small number that can only be produced out of one building as well. So walls are going to go down from ACCM. 100% expected this. You just turtle, and now you build. So we should see him gathering some stones. So far, he's actually neglected it. Instead, if you look, Kalp is the one who's going to go for a secondary TC at this rate. He's already got enough. Uh, has he constructed yet? Yeah, no. So he's holding on to the wood. He actually has what he needs to second TC. And he has the food supplies to actually support it. So I'd love to see him just actually slap down a second TC. Maybe just here on the gold vein. He actually could have perfectly placed it between the gold and the stone. But he's going to move it over to this gold vein instead. While on the tree line as well. So some value definitely going to be gained there. Second TC is not there yet for ACCM. He hasn't even started gathering stone. But he should be able to harass. Yep. Archer ship's already out, already forcing the garrisoning. And so far, Kalp, I mean, especially because he just invested in this TC, isn't producing any melee. Not that he'd be really be able to match this because he only has one dock still. So this greedy land approach is going to actually sacrifice the ocean, I think. Because ACCM will probably bring over like five, maybe six Dao ships total. And it will completely lock Kalp off of the war. War that he's made a decent investment in with this many ship, uh, fishing ships already. Longbowman. Longbowman can slowly kill these ships, by the way. It just takes a lifetime and a half in this small quantity. You have the range advice, but look what ACCM does. All he has to do is drag out, and then you have to come too close to the shore that you'll probably die. And it looks like ACCM is... No, okay. I was about to say, you don't want to chase these two fishing ships. Because then what would happen is you buy enough time for galleys to come out. So he just prioritizes fire here. He's sinking the fishing ships one by one in the meantime. And ACCM is sending more of these Dao ships. I'd love to see him just produce even more still. Um, just because you are going to be dealing with galleys soon. You have to know that he's producing one. Yeah, so fishing ships bait him away. He will lose another one in a sec. I'm pretty sure ACCM gets some range for this. Boom. Might even get the second one. Remember, these are drive buyers. They just go on. They move forward and they fire. So all these fishing ships are gone. Building the outpost. Now remember, outpost will give him a vage on the home front if he can get a galley out because he'll definitely be able to trade well against even two of these archer ships. And nice snipe out, actually. ACCM disrupts it because the villagers are dying too fast. And he's going to return the archer ship. So now the galley might be in trouble. He couldn't even dock to protect itself if it wanted to, as that dock is full. But now with five of these Dao ships, I think you easily kill the galley in time. Yeah. So you might have to kite with one of these Dao ships, but that's just going to bait the galley to waste more time not firing. And yeah, he even brings out the fishing ships. Is he is he planning to dock the galley? Maybe. Oh no, that's right. Fishing boats for a repair. I I keep having to remind myself of this. So ACM's made a mistake. He's actually not sniping the fishing ships out. This would be huge eco damage if he just targeted them. He's at least stopping the outpost going up. But there, now he's starting to fire on them. He actually needs to prioritize fire onto the fishing ships. He's doing it. So one goes down. A second galley isn't being built, by the way. And he's actually getting baited. He's not focusing on the nearby targets. So the fishing ships force the garrison again. We'll lose another one. He's at least got three of them to work with. But now, just wasting so much of Kalp's time. Because now, every time that Kalp turns away, ACM's going to move away. So he has to focus on the ship in front of him. 
and the Fisher ships are blocked off. Dao's placement of the Archer ship, he's just trying to stop him from reaching. He's going to sink the galley. He gets it. He gets rid of the outpost, and now this dock is not long for this world. All this while, by the way, Kalp at least took advantage of this moment to wall in his opponent. The problem is this is not bad for ACCM. ACCM can actually, in this area, easily add two free TCs and then boom up to free and then siege these walls if he wants to. More importantly, now that he has access to the water, he can even build a small skirmish army and then funnel them across. Not to mention all the food income that he now has access to that Kalp has just surrendered. Admittedly, not through a choice of his own. He didn't have a choice. He was forced to surrender this. He just didn't have the dock output to even remotely keep up with what ACCM done here. And also now ACCM, because he strongholds onto the water, he can now save economy down the line because this should be enough military force to deter any build up by Kalp back onto the water for the next five, six minutes at least. And that is time that you'll be able to capitalize on all this food gains. And you can even potentially, if you want to, go towards trade ships. Not that I expect him to do it too early into the game. Instead, he's doing this. And I love this move. ACCM. I think, yeah, he sees that he's walled in, so he goes, okay, I'm just going to, I mean, I've taken sea advantage. I'm going to have huge surplus of food. I want to use that food, and the best way I can think to do it is by coming across to your side of the map and building up a military presence. Or, is he going for the trade? Is he actually, is he actually going for the trade? So he's running all the way up here. He's, one, going to secure the sacred site if he does this, but two, he would have the option of building a dock and then going long range trade for the coastal trade post. The other alternative move that I could see him doing here is just basically returning the favor and walling in his opponent. That is an option. He has a little bit of stone to work with. He could probably stonewall this area here, this, this tree line, and then stop any land aggression. Please tell me he's, 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 please tell me he's walling it. Come on, he's got to be walling it, right? How much of the map does he see? He doesn't know... No, he doesn't see that much. So he's going to scout along here, and then he's probably going to wall it. No? Okay, he's going for the harassment instead. Okay, yes. Okay, let's go. So he's been double stable. His opponent probably only has longbowmen. He's only seen longbowmen so far, and there's been no land aggression. So ACCM's read on this is that Kalp hasn't actually countered any sort of land assault just yet. He only has a few longbowmen. And now, with this timing as well, getting ACCM up into the tech free, he can now go for either knights or horsemen. And Kalp is so far behind. He's trying to save up the food and the gold to actually tech up to keep up now. But he knows that he's going to fall behind resource-wise if he doesn't make a move soon because of the fact that he no longer has access to the sea. And I don't think... Is this still 1TC? Yeah, this is still just 1TC. ACCM has not set a point in, in getting a second one. This actually allows him to stay in tune with what is happening on the other side because Kalp, yeah, he's got a second TC but he, he hasn't been able to produce all these fishing boats. I mean, how many fishing? It's like 10 another 8 up here 19 fishing boats. I'm pretty sure it's 19 fishing boats right now. So he's getting so much surplus food that he's going to be able to spend now with the production of knights or rather lances in this situation. And I actually just adore this move. Even the Siege Workshop as well. So just a few of these lances will completely destroy Kalp's eco lines as well as his military presence. And he's going for the White Tower. I love this move coming out from Kalp. He already has a second TC. Going for a third would be way too greedy in this situation when you're boxed in like this. So this is your best move. Buy some time on the defense side so that you can actually look for some sort of leveraged advantage in terms of military presence. Because you're probably going to be forced to find your own base, right? This will at least stop them diving deep in. The only worry I do have is because you haven't, you know, haven't walled off this area. Look at this. There's, there's actually a path in that ACCM could take. And if he does that, you're going to lose a lot of your eco because they have to run so far for safety. And if we actually do the count, how many villages total? Like 40? At least 40? 50? Okay. Over 50. I mean, he's probably got what? Is it 60? 60 total, yes. He has garrison point for half that. So if you actually get... 10 lances, I think you actually just destroy his economy. Instead, he's built a trebuchet, though, so he's just going to look to destroy it a different way by getting rid of the TC. The treb has view. We'll start hitting this, and it's like, it's 500 damage. It's only a few salvos, so he's going to have to start repairing this regularly. There's probably more trebs coming out as well. It wouldn't surprise me if you get a second treb here. I think he's just more focused on getting the lancer production up, so there's no counterattack. And he charges straight in. That'll stop them repairing. So he might lose a few lances, but it buys time that the Treb might just be able to siege this down. And in fact, the damage to the, the Lombo account means that you're going to have next to nothing to defend yourself with outside villages and buildings. And he goes deeper. ACCM is like, okay, I'm outnumbered now. I'm going to lose these guys. What I can do is wreak havoc on your economy as he snipes out two villies. He's probably going to get 4-5 at least before there's a reaction from Kalp. Kalp, just trying to keep this up and alive. This, the other thing to keep in mind is this one Treb will force 
a huge commitment in terms of repairs, which means that's extra economy that isn't being utilized because they can't go and gather. And yeah, he spots out the racks. Gonna snipe out the village before he can complete that and start burning it down. There is at least one racks down, so this will be the Spearman spam coming out. So this should be where we see ACCM pivot. And he could easily pivot into archers. I would love to see maybe some camel archers, uh, just to directly counter spears. Remember, camel archers hit for about 10, but they get 20 extra damage against spears, which means it only takes a few hits. And like four or five, basically four or five camel archers will kill a spearman each time, each salvo. So we'll see if he opts for that. Um, is he is he pivoting further forward? I love the spread, by the way. Dow, like look at the Dow spread. Kalp can't get back on the water at all because ACCM has spread his ships out in a way that they're not patrolling. They give constant vision, so he'll know the moment that his opponent tries to get back on water, which means he doesn't have to prioritize anything into protecting his lead on the sea. And now, Maganel out. There is a springle that's been built by Kalp, but he needs to be a bit careful because it can be exposed. The Maganel is being hit. I don't think ACCM saw it yet. So two more hits, he's going to lose that. Yeah, that, I mean, the Maganel's just gone. So that's kind of wasted golden wood there. No real value gained. Not enough Lancers here to assault in either. Just a few Spearmen and these choke points will hold him back. So Kalp needs to actually establish a, a larger military. I would absolutely adore seeing ACCM just build into racks now and going Mana Arms. I think Mana Arms counter everything Kalp is doing and they lock him in and just completely stalemate him and then eventually give you a victory for you trebs. Like genuinely, this sort of eco advantage as well. I mean, you, yeah, you can afford, you can actually afford maybe three barracks just making Mana Arms and still get a few Lancers out. So when you see an opening, you exploit it. Keep in mind, by the way, if you go in as ACCM now, you want a decisive victory. Because if you fight under these town centers, they're giving this 25% attack speed buff. It's always present. So something that he's definitely considering. It's like you, you you can always tell when it's active, by the way. The moment that you get the signs, it is. And look, it affects Springles as well. So these Springles, three or four of these will quickly snipe out Lancers just as quick as you produce them. And that's the scary part. That's why he's not just charging in. Like, yeah, you know, it's not just a lot of spearmen, it's the fact that like every time you try and approach this, the attack speed difference means that you don't need this massive bulk of spearmen. Even if you had half of this, it would be enough to hold back the Lancers. And the Lancers are being shredded right now. Campfires go down as well, so you can stand his ground. But that's the Lancer army that's going to be gone. And this is the opportunity to now just move out and snipe out these Trebs. And the Trebs, are they going to get this in time? One more salvo. Looks like the repairs are going to be good enough. So he keeps it up and alive. And now the Springles are going to charge out and start to target out these trebuchets. Huge investment loss for ACCM. ACCM's assault force is just going to be repelled. He's trying to build the keep now. He did build this fort town center. He can't afford to let his fort base go down because it's so expensive at this stage. He's invested so much in it. The one burns down. Charge in. They're going to spot out the keep being built. This is a big deal. The keep didn't get it built quick enough. So ACCM's fort base is going to be burnt. There's no way you can hold this now. It would take a miracle. He's still building a few lances, but I mean, it's negligible. They can't even charge in after the Longbowman now because Trip Springles is enough to snipe out lances one by one. And yeah, that's definitely not how you use lances. Pokey sticks, just too strong. And this would have been the play. This actually would have been the play, the Archer Rangers. If he'd done this sooner, one or two Camel Archers, just spam out Archers as well. You completely counter out what Kalp can and is doing right now. But instead, he opted for the Lancers. It's an interesting choice as well. I actually love the Tread play. I love the early few Lancers just to harass into the Eco and cause havoc. Everything past that, though, it felt like ACM was a, a step behind Kalp. I don't know if he was just scared of the Springle spam, expecting it out of England. And that's why he didn't want to go for slower static units. But I genuinely think like you, you can Zerg in, potentially. Or at the bare minimum, you protect a Treb line. Something he was unable to do here. Kalp says, I am not out of this game yet. Huge damage being done. A huge investment by ACCM that's just going to be burnt. He's trying to complete the keep, but he couldn't get an extra person out in time. In fact, like any villages being produced have been immediately going to back across to try and finish that. But no dice. It's not going to be complete. Instead, they're now going to just snipe out the town center. So then you won't even have villages anymore. He tries to rush out a few lances here. Nope. Spring will switch over straight away. They're not getting the attack speed buff, though. Remember, it only triggers when you have enemies in range. So he's playing the right area, but it's not going to be good enough. Town Bell's finally going to be wrong because, of course, he did add this outpost in. And that's going to be Lancers getting sniped. That's going to be the stable getting sniped. Keep sniped. 
Town Center Snipe. What is the answer from ACCM now? He did build a backup base. Okay, so this is pretty cool. He's now switching across fully into the Camel Archers. And like we said, the Camel Archers completely counter out what Kalp is doing. Kalp is still in kind of recovery mode eco-wise, right? Like he's actually catching up, but he's been investing a lot of it into a standing army. And that's a standing army of Spring Olds, of Archers, and these things do get countered by the Camel Archers. Even a Magan, what? Okay, this is like this is just wasted gold. I don't know if this was a miscue or something from ACCM, but you, you've got Trip Spring all there. There's no way that Maganel's ever getting anywhere near safety. It's just more gold being wasted. Cal will be able to burn through the rest of this base. Uh, this Dock Loss won't hurt too much because he hasn't invested in trade. I would love to see him invest in just maybe three or four trade ships at this stage. I think they pay for themselves in four minutes tops. And because you're building these keeps now on ACCM, you'll definitely have four minutes in this game at least. The other cool play I like wouldn't mind seeing is you could have snuck ACCM could have snuck in like uh, a villager or two, built one or two racks here, built up like a force of maybe ten you know, amount of arms, and then just run into the eco lines. Um, mainly just to disrupt the flow of income. You probably wouldn't kill that many villies, but I think you like considering the amount of random units you were throwing out of these buildings that were just dying, still are. Um, I think you had surplus resources to try that type of play. Where it's like, uh, I'm here and now I'm here, right? Just kind of baiting him back and forth and Benny Hillsing him. So, full base down. Camel Archers to scout a max wrap round. Now, you could Stonewall forward here. I just don't think ACCM cares. With the keeps and the Camel Archers, like if anything, those Stonewalls just get in the way of you chasing. That being said, looks like, yeah, so acid distillation done. So, Kalp now going to kick up his gold production. I think he's getting, yeah, he's getting closer to ACCM. He's still behind, though. And like I said, if ACCM does start building these trade ships, Kalp will never catch up. And the cool thing about that is because you're the only one with access to the safe trade route, because let's face facts, either side, the land one could be risky, uh, you'll be able to go to an infinite generation point. We actually saw this between Doubt and Slam the other day, where Doubt had to be disrupted by Slam because he had this infinite gold trek while Slam was burning through these gold veins one by one until there was just one tiny ass one left in the center on its own. Both sides also haven't acknowledged the existence of relics so far, I don't think. It's kind of interesting. By the way, the reason I thought I was talking about ACCM trying for this backstab is I'm pretty sure ACCM never spotted out this building. Like, he has vision here from scouting earlier, but I don't think he ever saw the white tower go down. I might be wrong about that, though. But that would be a logical reason not to build a, a back barracks here. And he won't get a chance anyway in the future. Outposts are going down, so vision will be controlled by Kalp in this area. Still a few annoying archer ships here. I wonder if Kalp pivots back onto the water because, honestly, like, look at the situation. So much has now just been invested in the fishing ships. There's not a standing naval force, really, for ACCM. So there is actually a lot of exposed economy here. And that would force ACCM on the, the defensive to try and replace that economy on land. Something that you don't have to worry about as Kalp, because remember, you're England and you were building into farms anyway. You can already see the amount that he's actually got working here. So that's why his income per minute is, is looking pretty decent. And will now increase further. Remember, he gets another 5% for every age up in terms of the harvest rates on these farms. So now it's plus 30%. Pretty spicy. I think they need to rethink Enclosure. Enclosure is a weird one, by the way. The way Enclosure works is if you palisade around um, a farmland area, these farms, then they generate gold. But I think you need to leave at least two slots free. So, like, for example, there's a the one there's like a one tile here, right? You wouldn't be able to build a palisade here. It would have to be further back. You'd have to have a whole slot free. Um, you'd have to have some... Basically, you, if you think about the way you produce farms, this is the efficient way, right? What it's doing now. You'd actually have to have a farm space between these two farm areas and around them to enclose them with palisades and generate gold. It's a cool concept. I just think in the late game, especially when you're stacked with houses and farms, everything, and limitations from wood lines, it's too much of an ask for a player to... like regularly, consistently do that. 
right? If you compare it to other sides' gold generation methods, such as like Russ getting it from just putting a hunting cabin near a tree line, it's so much harder and so much extra work to just try and generate gold with your farmlands. Outpost going down. More forward operations coming out from ACCM as he gets the double seed shop down. Uh, I don't know if he spotted out this outpost being built. If if and by the way, if Cowboy keeps this up, it'll be really cool because when he pushes in, he'll have a huge advantage in terms of the attack speed buff, remember. But another keep going down will make it much harder for Calp to fight out. In the meantime, ACCM just losing another one of these ships, so he's kind of lost all information. He had a strong information game earlier on, but now if you actually look at the reveal details, he doesn't know anything about what's happening on Calp's side of the map. So all he knows, Calp could easily be rebuilding into Navy. Um, and if he is, ACCM doesn't seem to care. And I don't mind that. The reason being is like, if Calp was to build into the Navy now, that would mean he's investing a heavy chunk of his resources there instead of land, which means the ACCM doubling down on a land army is even better of a call. Right? Now up to a bunch of horsemen with the camel archers. Uh, if you're wondering why he's doing the horseman camels, it means that like his gold is free for siege units is the primary reason. Uh, what is his gold income now as well? Yeah, it's starting to fall down a little bit. Kalp has surpassed him. He still hasn't utilized trade posts. I think if he was going to utilize trade posts, we'd actually be seeing lances instead of horsemen, but that's just not the case. Sizable four, siege. Okay, yeah. So I think the plan here for ACCM is to reach a critical mass of, of Springholds, probably like 10. 10 would be a pretty potent force. And then you can easily counter out the Springholds you're up against. Then you can also counter out any sort of Maganel or Bombard cannons that are coming. You can actually see the counterweight Trebs. Uh, and I don't think he... He doesn't know what tech up Kalp done, so he doesn't know that he didn't go for the Palace where he gets cheap Trebs. But instead, he's now going to know exactly what ACCM is up against. As he charges in, horsemen catch up guard a lot of these villages and the camel archers as well just burning through him here. And he does not have any Maganels, keep that in mind. He's trying to spam out military builds as quickly as possible and he's going to need all of them because there is just so many camels here. Chase in, ticking them down quickly. Remember, these camel archers counter out the spearmen and then the horsemen are not countered by the spears anymore. He chases in under the... Under the all of these crossbows are wasted. Longbows mainly. There's a few crossbows in there. Not going to last long. And the camel archers are plenty bulky enough to take down this archer army. He's burning through all of the siege equipment. The camel archers reign supreme. As the bombard cannons, pricey investment being lost. The sprinkles cannot do enough damage to this many camel archers. ACCM, he found the solution. And surprise, surprise, for Abbasid Dynasty, it once again was camels. Movement four back up, just trying to garrison, trying to use his landmark defenses to his advantage, but you have to know Siege Weaponry is on the way. It's only Springles at the moment, but that will switch over pretty quick to Bombard Cannons. And the Camel Archers will just charge through to the Eco Line and snipe out any Treacolin or reinforcements that Kalp could muster. And this is the worst part. Look where your military production line is. A lot of it is on the front now, so if you want to utilize it, they're going to get sniped out by Camel Archers one by one. Not a good feeling at all. As ACCM will charge further back just to make sure he's got every single one of his boxes ticked. Maganel finally built, but it's too late, Kalp. It's too late to get value out of a Maganel. You can keep repairing it, but there's been a delta split from the camels. They are no longer clustered and no longer exploited as a bunch by rocks. Trico continues on in. Runs even deeper. He finds the farmlands. Kalp is producing nothing. Look at his wood. Look at his food. His food is just plummeting down. He's got double farm back here. That's going to be spotted out as well. Everybody has to garrison. Even the cold veins are going to be exposed. And his production line is just going to be forced towards a, a complete halt. A complete stop. While ACCM, the chugga chugga choo choo line of death continues towards Kalp's base. And now the Bombards are up as well. Palace exposed, Spring Alls, more Bombards coming. I think Kalp knows when it's over. He knows when he's done. Yeah, he's getting a little bit of gold, a little bit of food here and there. But there's just no standing army to protect him. And the Camel Archer's spam is just never ending from ACCM. What a game. What a play. Really well played by ACCM. 
uh, to pivot and, and show patience. Kalp, I love the way he def defended and just like offset this forward base from ACCM, but I think ACCM's ultra aggression onto the docks, uh, in, onto the sea in the early game via trip dock, was just this, the deal breaker. I genuinely think if Kalp puts out an equal amount of docks and he gets his gold line sorted quickly, then he actually just completely rules the seas against ACCM. But we're just starting to see once again, obviously Dynasty, their eco advantages, maybe, maybe a little bit too powerful in this matchup and England, just one step behind ACCM at all times.